Sounds good to me. That's good. That means your food dollars are going up in worth. The opposite of currency debasement is taking part, in, in, in taking place in regard to food. That's a good thing. I'm all for it. Who wouldn't be? You'd be out of your nut not to be. Oh, they're talking about paddling kids in public schools. I thought that was illegal in America, but I found out. I mean, they're doing that. They've been doing that all along in certain states. My dad nutted up, man. I went to school in Ireland, and they'd use a stick. If you don't answer a question fast enough or you answer it wrong, you got to go to the front of the class. And this big, fat, sadistic teacher in the, Catholic school, the public schools are Catholic over there. Have you hold your hand out, little fourth graders, and they swat your hand with it. If you pull your hand back, then you get two swats. Yeah, a dowel, like like a three eighths inch dowel or something. He was using to whack the boys. The boys and girls were separated. The girls had to go to convents over there. My dad got wind of that. He almost killed the uh, the principal, the headmaster over there. So I don't think it's a good idea to do that. I mean, you better get a letter of consent because. Um, it ain't going to go well for you unless you do. So let me see where I ended up. Hang on a second here. Okay, I'm on to some thoughts from this past week. Oh, there was one thing I forgot, that cop, that woman cop, that um, she went into the wrong apartment. You see that woman's face. She looks like she's been doing some sleeping pills, maybe Ambien, because I heard the stuff people do on that are, is um, it's frightening, walking in their sleep, driving in their sleep. But she walked in the wrong apartment, apparently. The witnesses said she knocked. Well, maybe she did knock. Who knows? I mean, people knock on their own apartment, maybe... She, that was a trick she had for finding out if there was anybody that was in there. You know, she maybe hear them move around or something. Maybe she was listening. Maybe she did not. But I believe that she, did, she didn't kill this guy. It wasn't a vendetta. Maybe, I don't know. They needs to be investigated. Maybe she's a bad cop, bad seed in there. And she was involved in some um, surreptitious business with uh, maybe it's a drug deal or something that uh, this guy, you know, was trying to blackmail her. Uh, who knows? I mean, that possibility exists, so it should be examined and investigated. But on its face, I think that she, um, on its face, I think that she uh, probably it was just a mistake. And she was probably, because she looked like she was in a state of shock. Anyhow, on to some thoughts from this past uh, couple of weeks. <laughs> They're kind of building up here. I'm not going to finish them, but I'm going to do what I can in less than 10 minutes. Have you ever noticed how someone else's stress affects you? For example, if your neighbor is angry and audibly arguing with his wife in an unbecomingly hostile manner, uh, that's one example of many. I actually think I read that one last week, but anyhow, I read it again. Go against the grain of the establishment when it is evil, as, our, as ours irrefutably is. Otherwise, you are guaranteed to get an allegorical slivers, to get allegorical slivers, some more painful than others, depending on how vested in the establishment you are. The day of reckoning is upon us. So that could be the big sliver you get is by compromising your integrity, your honor, your conscience, and by extension, your very soul. It gets compromised when you go with the grain of an evil establishment, like going with the grain of rough wood or something. You're guaranteed. It's, you know, it might work for a while, but you're going to get, you're gonna get it in a lot of trouble by going with this evil establishment. Contending within the bounds of our wholly corrupt current economic system in an attempt trying to get ahead and attempt to enter middle class home ownership status has become much like pulling a rabbit out of the hat or running in the sand while the a-holes keep pouring in more copious amounts of sand and uh, or, or it's like chasing your tail as your tail keeps growing shorter. Right. There you go. 
They make us like dogs, you know, to try to enter middle class home ownership. We're like dogs chasing our tail while simultaneously our tail just keeps getting shorter and shorter. Life's way too short to live it as a mindless a-hole. Here's just a few of the things we could have or will have if and when the captives have been set free, totally free. Extra houses everywhere on the earth, extra parking in every town, and to rush hour freeway trafficking, an end to rush hour freeway traffic, copious amounts of everything we need or want, a profound sense of peace, joy, safety, security, freedom, and happiness. Remember, that's just the beginning. So who in their right mind could possibly oppose setting the captives free? Nobody except the evil ones. Right, Scripture says, I have not seen, I have not seen, nor ear heard what the Lord has in store for those who love him. Though we all have the power of personal decision to decide to be no man's enemy, we do not have the power to decide for others that we are not their enemy. If there's one thing I am absolutely certain of, it is that I do not want to be answerable to God nor man, nor my own conscience, for the unnecessary suffering of another human being. As such, it is my God-given prerogative, as it is all of ours, to be every man's best friend, as it is every person's prerogative, and thereby allowing all the captives to be set free. When people do the wrong thing while fully believing that they are honestly doing the right thing, we have a serious social, political, and economic problem. And that's the state of affairs with the establishment, folks. I'm a huge proponent of prosperity, just not selective prosperity. We humans, each one of us, is a cosmic wonder on a universal scale. We are quite literally akin to little gods, the children of God. And that directly implies that our God is our parents, our creator. Three things unique to the human creature, clothing, money, and war. Though I may speak of the obvious, I wonder how many ask why. I believe it is not the love of sin that makes our species evil. Rather, it is our love of Satan, a.k.a. money, that makes our species evil. Any person whom opposes universal and absolute freedom for all humanity literally opposes God's will being accomplished on earth. Due to our training from birth, many, perhaps most people, think me radical for flatly stating the only path for humanity to take to find true and complete happiness is to seek universal and absolute freedom, yes, including monetary freedom. Simply put, we humans are a trip, man. Well, that's it. I'm going to stop reading right there. I know this video is about to end, but listen. I wish the very best for everyone, and uh, there's no shortage of best, folks. So love your fellow human being, even though they disgust you. You think they're vile. You've got to learn to, you know, take the most vile of men you can imagine and lift them before God, and we can expose their rotten fruits. But remember, at the end of the day, God wants them in his fold. He wants that their sin to be washed clean. And to be forgotten as far as the east is from the west, as is put. He'll put our sins behind us. And those most wretched, those most wayward out there, whose sins are as scarlet like it's written, will be washed as white as the snow. Okay, they're going to be washed clean. Anybody that turns to him will get that promise fulfilled in their life. And it's like a debt being forgiven. And God takes great joy in the love he receives from all those people that we thought were lost and a hopeless cause. So we can't judge people to the point of condemning them. We've got to do our level best to really care. That means to really love our fellow human beings from our heart. You can't fake it. I mean, you know, words are cheap. Lip service is cheap, like it's written in Scripture. You people honor me with your, with your lips, but your hearts are far from me. We don't want to be like the hypocrites the elitists that live by a double standard because they all know which highway they're on and they're going to be the most miserable of all. You understand if they don't have subjects to bully around, these are going to be some bad, miserable actors when they're separated from the righteous. 
and we don't want to be on that side and we don't want them ending up there and for us to not have done our very best to persuade them that they don't want to go there, that they need to relent, they need to be contrite, they need to be humble, and they need to repent or perish. So anyhow, folks, have a great week. God willing, I'll talk to you next week. And uh, I love everybody. I wish the best for everybody. I'm sorry to anybody I offended. I don't mean to. Even the wicked. I know you're going to hate me. 